Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. I hope you're having a wonderful evening, and if you're not having a wonderful evening, hopefully we can fix that. Although I really have no power over your life, I do have power over the small microcosm that I call the living room of my apartment. Just to provide some context here, there's not much room in the apartment. What I call my living room is about a quarter of the space that we call home here. This is my couch, my TV over here, this is a wall outside, the kitchen's over there, and the bedroom's way back there. And my desk is way over there. And I'm not pointing at the camera, I'm pointing to the other side. It's great. And this is indeed the best part of your week right here. It's Astro, that's a good green colored shirt. It's like... Now, I would call this more blue, yeah, it's kind of cyanish. However, depending on your monitor and your settings and whatever you've got going on with your eyes, it could be green. I'd say it's not completely blue, but it's also not completely green. I tried to go for the blue, the blue to match this guy down here, as best as I can. I'm down here, this is a little, a little logo down there. You might have noticed the little logo in the bottom left corner of the screen. That's down there. I pointed in the correct direction this time. I'm very proud of myself because this week there's a special event happening in a community that I'm a part of. The Aura Fury community, which has officially been stated as a non-profit community now, as a space for gamers to go on and just kind of be themselves and hang around, chat around. They do games like Minecraft and Vincent Story and Overwatch, Phasmophobia and a shiz ton of other games. I don't really play most of them, except for Minecraft. I was, I was speaking the other day about how I don't play a lot of Minecraft, but of the Minecraft that I do play is a mod pack created by the, the kind of leader of the Aura Fury community, aka Econ Brony, and very chill guy, very chill dude, makes a pretty good mod pack. So good, in fact, that I only made some minor adjustments to it. It's still as good as it was, I guess, way back ago when it was there. Yo, dead girl! What's going on? Hey! I love that there. Yo, actually, I see those party horns there. It may have been a while. We have party horns now. And in addition, I have a kazoo, and I am not afraid to use it. Because I will, and I have. What's going on there? Work that body. Oh, it's time to do some reverse lunges. We gotta warm up. Yeah, we do. I'm, am I doing this correctly, dear? I have to go, wait, 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 okay, okay. I gotta go, I gotta go tap the ground. Here we go. We gotta do a warm up. We always have to. We gotta, we gotta. In any case, Let's get things kicked off over here. I was mentioning Aura Fury. Aura Fury is a community that I'm a part of. I, I like it. I don't speak too much. I'm a bit of a lurker myself. However, I do appreciate uh, being around kind-hearted people and people who just like aren't dicks to each other. That's a good thing. The folks in Aura Fury don't seem to be dicks to each other, at least not from what I could have seen yet. So y'all are doing a great job over there and I appreciate you very greatly. But a part of this, it's a watchathon. So there's a bunch of stuff going on. People have been streaming since about yesterday and they will be continuing to do so until the end of the week, I think. I've got another stream. I'll be playing Minecraft pretty much all night or all day, depending on your time zone. <laughs> Mine's Eastern Standard Time. Actually, it's Eastern Daylight Time, I guess now. Time is weird. Time is a funny, funny thing. And oh wow, someone who isn't Anna asked me to work out. Yeah. I got some important people in my life and they want to make sure that I am in tip top shape to do my job. Is that a call out? My life. Is it a call out? Is that a call out? It? No, it's not a call out. She's gonna do it anyway. Oh, I haven't even goodness. turned you on. Anna hasn't even turned me on yet. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to do that. Wink. Anyway. Aura Fury is great. Go uh, um I got a little I got a little exclamation point command down there for Aura Fury Watch a Thon. There's a lot of stuff going on this week. The, the, the schedule isn't quite up on the website yet. However, they got a Discord server too. If y'all are interested, go check them out there. It's great. This is Watchathon number two, actually. I did like a long, I think, Minecraft stream back then a little bit. And they were really nice this time. I was like, yo, can I can I stream my cocktails during this thing? And they were like, sure, whatever. I was like, yes, I love that stuff. So in honor of them, I'm gonna put a little surprise at the end of this drink. Uh, It'll be cool. It'll be awesome. Stick around if you want to. Anna's gotta get the gotta put in the effort. She's gotta put in the effort to turn me on. She has to click the power button on the computer, then wait a little bit, no! and then click on Google Chrome. I have Chrome. to plug in my. I have to figure out. I lost where it put it. Apparently, she has no idea what path to take to turn me on anymore. It's not definitely not HTTPS colon slash slash push dot TV slash camera with an X. And we're gonna do some flexion. LED one for X flexions. Lower uh, extremity. D1 flexion. You gotta show me how to do that again. I forgot. It's you been forgot so long. It? I forgot it. You forgot it. I'm not a PT, physical therapist, like you're training to be. What do we got? Out. Out. With your leg. Back. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Back. Oh, she's not even she can remember. Shit. Is it's this sad one because. Or is this two? It's sad because we can't even see me doing any of the things anyway because I'm below the bar. Not if I move Back up. Wait a minute. Out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. No. Wait. Wait a minute. There we go. No, it's definitely this one. If I had something to stand upon. This could be easier. Wait, I got yoga blocks. 
Much Let's try this. Nope, that's gonna fall. Just kidding. This is all we get. This is all we get. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a table anymore. Well, how do you even do the D LED reflections? Okay. Okay. Side point? Side points. Oh, wait, no, it's no, like no, your leg going out like this. No, nope, just kidding. Across. Cross. Like your Cross legs point. going like this. Hacky sack. Hacky sack. No, no, don't switch the Don't hip. switch the hip. Just, just do the thing. Yes. So what yes. you're gonna do, you're following along at home, so you're gonna take your leg, any leg, and put it across your other leg on the ground. Point your toe. Point your toe. Don't forget to point your toe. Bring it out, flex the foot. Bring it out. Now take it around like, that, like that's this. That's not part of No, I'm showing because the camera can't see me. These are my toes. You put it to the other side, but don't, don't twist your hip. Otherwise you're doing it wrong. So if you're doing it right, it'll be cross, and then up to the, whoa! Don't lose your balance, up to the side. <laughs> anyway, wait, I should probably get started on this cocktail then. That was only three, anyway. come on! I'm still going, I'm still going, I'm so sorry! I'm so this, you got this! Anyway, today's cocktail is brought to you by Sugar Boo & Co. Uh, they sold Anna this book down in Disney Springs, Orlando, Florida, as a part of the, Di the Walt Disney World Resort I went to Disney. campus thing. Anna went to Disney. She's flaunting it. She got me a book. It's pretty cool. It's a cocktail book called Around the World in 80 Cocktails by Chad Parkhill with illustrations by Alice Ower? Ower, perhaps? In any case, it's a, it's a wonderful book. It's got great illustrations in it, and when I'm done doing my flexions over here, I will put it up to the camera to show y'all. Unfortunately, I'm a little... I'm a little... Oh, okay. Anna's gonna do it now. All right, I'm gonna do my back thing back here. Wait. This is Around the World in 80 Cocktails. It's got 80 cocktails in it. No, you're good, you're perfect. That's exactly right. Uh, just like, just open up to a page or something. Show them the back of the book. Yeah, all right. There's like an old fashioned or oh something God, back there. Like, this thing is inverted this way. There no, it's not inverted. That they can, they can read it correctly. They can read that? Yes, I have it so that if you put it up to the camera, they can read it correctly. Take a look at that. Look at that. Screenshot that. It's beautiful content. And now, if Anna, you could pull up to the, the page that's currently bookmarked, that's the cocktail for this evening. Ooh, Ooh Chad L. Parker! Chad Parker and Alice Orr. Oh wait, you're doing the Queen's part? I'm doing the Queen's part, yes. You're not gonna do the... the, the no, don't lose my page! I was using this card as my bookmark. You're not gonna do the page. one I... Which one do, oh, I have to show them, don't I? Oh, I'm gonna put my table back. Ooh. Whoa! This is really hard to like... I put my table back. Wow, well, I'm completely exhausted now. Stream's over, everybody. Like, there we go. I finally did it properly. I'm trying to. Oh my god, I'm trying to do the thing. Oh. Oh, do we get a on the demonstration? An on screen demonstration? Ignore that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We did that. I'm back here. Oh, Anna, what are you doing? I'm anyway, showing them everything. I'm sure do if you've been taking. Names? I haven't. I'm sure if you were taking your screenshots, you have everything that I'm about to do. Ah! Oh, but you don't. But you don't know what the orb. You don't know with the Orange Fury special surprises at the end, so you'll have to stick around like everybody else. Oh, My face is very red. That is in direct contrast, contrast to the color. Should I make you work out again? This is okay. I think we're doing great. Hi, everybody. Cocktail time. Relax your body. Relax your mind. I definitely just asked for whatever's about to happen, for sure. The Queen's Park Swizzle. The cocktail that I'm doing, the cocktail that I'm doing tonight is just, I was just kind of flipping through this book and I tried, find, I tried to find the one that I could actually do. There's a lot of ingredients in here starring like different types of liqueurs and liquors from like around the world. Fix myself. You fix yourself, dude. I am fixed. I don't know what you're talking about. I gotta about. dress my table. It's a little off center. Honestly, I probably gotta fix my hair. How's my... Do you want a brush? No, I don't need no brush. Actually, there's a brush on this couch, but it's missing a handle. Don't be This is the brush, brush in the house that's missing a handle. Oh wait, I need that brush. Ooh. My hair's a mess. <laughs> Random question. Azure asks, if I had to marry a video game character, who would you pick? Sonic the Hedgehog. Please don't ask any further questions. Are you serious right now? Yeah, I think he's pretty cool. He got he got to go fast. And he's got all those rings. This dude is freaking loaded. Gold rings? I'd be set for life. Video game character. I'd be set for life. And it's going to answer the question too. Wait, wait, wait. I got to think. What's a video game? <laughs> What's a video game, asked Jenna? Well, it's anything that's virtual and non-existent. Mega Man! She Not Mega Man. Mega Man. Is, it th is this Mega Man? That is Mega Man. That's correct. We have a little Lego Mega Man that He's my favorite little... He's a video game character, right? Yes, yes, he is. But that's a Lego version. He was of one of my, like, character. childhood crushes. I loved him. He did well. Hey, Anna's not the first person out there to have a crush on a video game character. Plus, and then I can just shoot things with his arm. Mm -hmm. And I know it would be happy. Mm -hmm. Never, never knows. I love that. Thank anyway. You. Back to your regularly scheduled cocktails on a Wednesday. You can tell it's cocktails on a Wednesday because it's a Wednesday. But ah, the VOD comes out on Fridays. So you may be confused. This is a live show. If you're not aware, this is a live show. 
https colon slash slash twitch.tv slash camera with an x the camera is spelled with an x and so is with an x so don't get confused <laughs> astro surprise you didn't hear a genshin mention that rhymed i appreciate that however i love genshin impact however breath of the wild's got my heart in terms of open world like that although i'm not a i don't think i'm I want Link to be my- Well, you know, Link could provide too. He's got all those rupees and stuff and like the Triforce of Courage. Are you a furry so. if you would marry like Sonic? I don't know. I don't think I can call- I don't think I have the right to call myself a furry because I don't think I am. We'd have to ask a furry and ask them if I'm a furry. If I can get the perspective of a furry to tell me that I'm a furry, I'll believe it. Honestly, simple answer, probably. Although maybe not- Are you serious right now? No. I need to leave. First suits are expensive. Otherwise, maybe I'd have to know. I, I know. One of my friends was like really into it for a little bit. I did know that friend. A furry is someone who has a fursona. Well, I have a fursona and it's a panda. Named Panda. No, you do not. It's a panda. Actually, I'm sorry. My spirit animal, maybe it's not my fursona. My spirit animal is a sea lion. If you've never, listen, if you have never listened to a sea lion screaming, a, a sea lion just speaking or barking, it sounds like a grown man screaming. This is my rendition of a sea lion. Uh, uh. That's a sea lion. And I feel bad for the person that I just met upstairs. I hope you were okay. I know your name now. I'm sorry. Anyway, I need to, I need to take a gulp of water. I'm so out of breath already. Mm. If you love a furry, but don't have a persona, you're just a regular person with, a reg with regular kinks that loves someone who's a furry. I believe that. Hey, you know what? Everybody deserves love. Wait, did they just imply I'm a furry? Hey, if you love a furry, that doesn't necessarily make Leo a furry, but I may be a furry, but we don't know about that. Bye-bye, dear! She's in the bedroom now. She has closed the door. It means it's time to get you. Blue water bubble. Topic on point today. So, where was I? What were we doing? We were making a cocktail, because it's on a Wednesday. It's Wednesday night. We drink on Wednesday nights. We don't need a reason to! Tonight's drink, if you couldn't already tell by Anna sticking it in front of the camera, is the Queen's Park Swizzle. And I was trying to look through this book to find a cocktail that I can make in it. There's a bunch of different types of liqueurs and liquors and whatnot in this book that are like from different parts of the world and they're, they're, they're special, they're like, they're niche things. I can't just go to my liquor store and buy them. Like, like I'm gonna flip through a couple of these to try to see if I can find one. Um, uh, Benedictine I can find, I can find Muscatel wine. I don't know what Rebarbara Zucca is, um, but that's in here. Uh, Brenidine is also a liquor that's in here. Suze, I know there's types of sake in here. There's one type of sake. Uh, uh, anyway, there's a lot. There's a lot in there, and it's pretty, pretty crazy. Oh my goodness. Astro asks, what do you think is the most expensive hobby? The most expensive hobby is spending money. If your hobby is to spend money, shopping. It's expensive because you have to expend money to satisfy that crate. If your hobby is spending money, that's expensive. It's gotta be. There's no way around it. I choose to spend my money on cocktail books, or rather Anna spends to tend, to, tends to spend her money on cocktail books for me because she went to Disney and was like, I feel bad that I haven't gotten that Cameron anything because she got me a book and I appreciate that. And I love her for that. And she knows exactly what I'm looking for. Actually, in this book, it actually states the measurements in milliliters first and then fluid ounce is second, which is awesome because personally I prefer the metric system, but I am doomed here in the United States where we have to use fluid ounces, which don't add up properly, not a new cups or anything like that. It's just like, it's wild, it's out of there. But so the reason, another thing about this cocktail is that apparently it goes all the way back to like the origins of Angostura bitters, which is this little number right here. You may notice if you're unfamiliar with the Angostura bitters, the, the bottle is a little odd. There's a label that doesn't quite fit it. There's a story behind that, apparently. I don't exactly know what that story is, but I think it's in here. So I wanna, I'm gonna go through and like read what this cocktail book has to say about this cocktail and also about Angostura Bitter because this cocktail book basically did the job for me. I could have given you a historical rundown of Angostura Bitters and the Angostura Company and their aromatic bitters, which were used as a way to like heal people or something to these people back in the day. But this book did it all for me. Story time. <clears throat> the cocktail is the Queen's Parks. Swizzle. From the port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, just like Angostura Bitters. Angostura Bitters got its start in 1824 when German doctor Johann Siegert was looking for a cure-all medicine while working as the Surgeon General for Venezuelan military leader Simon Bolivar. 
and living in the Venezuelan town of Angostura, now Ciudad Bolivar, or Bolivar, I don't know. Before long, Secret's bitters had become the key ingredient in the quintessential drink of the British naval officer, Pink Gin, and from there wound its way into liquor cabinets and back bars the world over. After Venezuela's political climate destabilized, Seagert's sons moved to the company uh, to move the company to Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Tobago, where Angostura bitters has been produced ever since. Hence, hence why it says Trinidad and Tobago on it somewhere. I thought it does. Wait, do you not say that? Product of Trinidad and Tobago, right there, all the way, all, all the way on the bottom. There it is. Unlike its many competitors, Angostura survived the devastation of prohibition, and a distinctive bottle with its oversized label, apparently the result of a miscommunication between the person responsible for ordering the bottles and the person who designed the label, soon became something of a staple for bartenders throughout the 20th century. No bar worth the name would be found without a bottle of Angostura, even if it hadn't been touched in years. In recent years, the craft cocktail boom has brought forth a panoply, P-A-N-O-P-L-Y, panoply, Panoply of new bitters from restorations of uh, oh I get it like Monopoly would be one Panoply would be many I get that uh, brought forth a in recent years the craft cocktail boom has brought forth a panoply of new bitters from restorations of Angostura's former competitors such as Abbott's bitters to a dizzying array of wild new concoctions grapefruit oolong bitters anyone that's in the book. While Angostura might now seem old hat, the Queen's Park Swizzle, named after the now demolished Queen's Park Hotel in central Port of Spain, a short jaunt from the Angostura's headquarters, will remind you exactly why this delightfully balanced bitter stuck around when its peers were dropping like flies. With its rich, rosy crown of bitters floating on top, this referring to the drink now, um, and a, heavy, a hefty pour of rum inside, it's little wonder that tiki drink pioneer Trader Vic called it the most delightful form of anesthesia given out today. Interesting. Interesting indeed. And so this cocktail actually uses some mint, uses some rum, uses some lime juice, simple syrup, and of course, Angostura bitters. And I actually don't need my shaker for this. Yet again, I picked a cocktail that doesn't require to be shaken this time around, which I don't know if that means the shaker is dying or, or I'm, just, I'm just learning to use, excuse me, other methods. I don't need this yet. I'm gonna put this back down here and go for it later. But to start things off, I'm gonna need a glass. This one calls for a Collins glass, and the closest thing I have to a Collins glass is what may consider, may, some may consider to be a highball glass. I don't have many glasses, and apparently there is some confusion about what a highball glass looks like and what a Collins glass looks like. I wanna say this is a Collins glass. It's thin, and I wanna say the Collins ones are the thins one, thin ones. However, I don't have anything to compare to, except for the internet, but eh. Whatever. Let's continue. So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need that. And actually, there's not a lot of like, there, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here that I think is worth watching. So I actually am gonna go out for these yoga blocks, and nothing is falling, which is a good thing. And take a little zoom so that we can kind of watch and see what's going on here, or at least attempt to. I don't know. There will eventually be better setups in the future. However, this is what we have, and this is what we're gonna go with. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch this cocktail be built. We're gonna watch a baby being born. By a baby, I clearly mean a cocktail. So the first thing that this, uh, this cocktail calls for is eight mint leaves. In actuality, actually I should zoom out for a moment. I have herbs growing in this apartment. I have basil, I have mint, and I have parsley. And one of those plants is indeed a mint plant. I don't know if I've ever shown, I've definitely shown Menthol Man, the mint plant on stream before, but my goodness, oh, Menthol Man has grown considerably. This is my mint plant. Their name is Menthol Man, and she is beautiful. And I need eight leaves, apparently, that I'm going to muddle at the bottom of the glass. So now that we've got a beautiful view of me and my mint plant, it's such a beauty. I love her. Mm. Very, very cute. Very cute indeed. Amazingly beautiful. Absolutely. And it makes for some great contrast with everything else going on. I'm going to take eight pieces of mint leaves, and I'm just going to put it in there. I'm going to muddle it. Muddle basically just means I'm going to take this muddler, aka what the store called a garlic presser, and just kind of like push those leaves against the, the bottom of the glass and try to squeeze out all the oils from them. It works. It does stuff. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going try to eight, try to take the eight biggest leaves that I can off of Menthol Man. I got one there. got one here. Menthol Man really needs a prune because um, it's, it's been a hot minute. I've got three. I'm going to drop them in there. Let me get a couple more. We've got some nice green ones in the back here. This is four. This is five. So there might be some down here that are good. Oh, 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 I see some down here. Six. 
Uh, seven. And whatever's easiest. I think that's the eighth one. The eighth wonder of the world was actually a mint leaf. There we go. That's about... Oh, there's a, there's some brown ones in there. I don't really want that. Hold on, no, no. I gotta get that out of there. That's... That's not chill. I don't want dead leaves. That doesn't taste good. There's not a lot of oil in dead leaves. Alright. The dead ones are out of there. There we go. There we go. And just because I really, I really, really like mint, I'm gonna put a couple more leaves in there if I can find them. Yeah, here's one. Here's one. There we go. Thank you for your service, menthol man. We appreciate you greatly. We'll send you back down to the world below. Hopefully not crushing yourself beneath the weight of your own thing. Get some of these dead leaves off of there. So take your mint leaves, mint things, and muddle them. So just kind of like press them to the bottom of the glass. Doesn't need to be too much. Uh, I mean, I don't, to be honest, I don't exactly know how much mint oil you can get out of mint leaves, but just give them a little thing there. It's gonna do something. Honestly, Oh, it definitely worked because my muddler now smells like mint. One of my favorite things to do with mint is just take a leaf, any leaf, and like slap it. <laughs> this is my mint leaf. <laughs> slap it. And it smells awesome. Also, mint is pretty good. I think so. It's bitter, but it leaves a nice taste in your mouth. It's nothing like mouthwash though. Excuse me, my little piece still stuck in there. So you muddle your eight mint leaves, or however many mint leaves you want to, I guess. It depends on how minty a person you are. Are you like, are you like a really, like, cool minty person? In which case, add more. Do that. Also, just eating the mint leaf is super good. Yeah, like, it's, it's eating plants. There's nothing bad about eating plants, unless the plants are poisonous. In which case, they will kill you. And that's bad. The next ingredient that we need is two fluid ounces or 60 milliliters of flavorful dark rum. I gotta be honest, I got a couple of dark rums in this apartment. I think the most flavorful one I have is a tried and true Myers rum. It's like molassesy, it's caramelly, it's dark. I say it's dark, which doesn't tell you much because it is a dark color and it says dark on the bottle, but like, it tastes dark too. And I don't exactly know how to explain that yet, but it tastes dark. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And if you don't know what I mean, I hope to be able to get the vocabulary one day to be able to explain what that means in better terms. But I need two fluid ounces of that. It is, as, as they said, a hefty pour of flavorful dark rum, which is gonna go basically to the bottom of our glass down there. And what's interesting about this one is, in that, whoops, I spill a little bit. That's okay, that's why I have, that's why I have a towel. And I lost quite a bit of that, let me, that's not really a problem. It doesn't show up on camera. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but let me also, let me just, I spilled quite a bit of it, so I'm just gonna like, boop. Beep. That's fine. That's okay. I make mistakes around here. If, <laughs> dude, if cocktail, if mixology and bartending were not a messy business, it wouldn't be much of a show now, would it be? But I like, I like the, um, I like the dark rum that I've got here. I, I, I have a lot of rums in my collection, and only two of them are dark. I have uh, a Gosling's Dark Black Seal, and I have the Myers, and it's pretty good. They're good. I'm sure there are more out there, but I have disproportionately a number of rums in my collection, more so than the other spirits in my collection, and it feels like it doesn't do them justice, so I try not to, unless somebody buys me it, in which case, I will accept it, because I do like my rums and Cokes, and so do the people I have over every once in a while. But the next ingredient that I require in here is uh, three quarters of an ounce or 20 milliliters of lime juice, freshly squeezed if we can get it, which I have it. I have my, I have my, um, let me see. Yeah, let's move this for a moment and watch me cut limes. That's entertaining, right? Cutting limes is entertaining? Yes, yes it is. It's super entertaining. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Dark liquors have a flavor the way that Astro would describe. It's like how in the movie Ratatouille, it's get a particular feeling and some just taste like something heavy and dark. I get that. I totally understand that. I've been thinking recently, you know how in Ratatouille as well, the when he eats the Ratatouille, he gets like taken back to like his youth and stuff like that. Honestly, I have been describing flavors in terms of the memories that I hold close to them. Like, I don't remember what I had the other day, but I like, I legitimately take, I had something to eat or maybe it was something to drink. And I was like, wow, this tastes like the way I remember this. And it was not me eating something. It's not me remembering things that I sniffed or eat or whatever. It's just like, it reminded me of a location and a time. And like, I don't know. It's like, a, and I, I got a feeling, I think the olfactory sense, your schnoz 
and your taste buds are very close to each other, but they're also really, really close to like the memory center of your brain, if there even is a memory center. At least that's according to some neurological study out there. All that stuff is changing every single year, so we could be like completely wrong about that. The brain is a heck of a lot more complicated than we tend to model it out to be, which makes sense. Like, how in the world am I conscious right now if not for the fact that my brain is doing things that I don't necessarily understand all the time? Oh, goodness gracious. In any case, three quarters of an ounce. If you can get three quarters of an ounce out of a single lime, kudos to you. I don't think that I can, but I'm gonna try my bestest to do so. Let's give it a shot. And supposedly too, and this is something that I, do, I haven't done recently, but like, uh, supposedly you can like do something to a citrus to get more juice out of it. Uh, I think you just kind of like roll it around in your hand for a little bit. There's like a, chi a trick to get all the juice out of it. And actually, these are incredibly juicy limes. This is actually going to very easily give me the three quarters of an ounce or 20 milliliters that I require, which is perfect. It's great. I love that. <laughs> You're pretty much like right there, right? When, uh, when uh, referring back to the whole like, when you taste something or smell something, you can like experience a memory at the same time. It's like, it's freaking wild. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. And like, I don't know. I don't remember what it's like. When I, whenever I smell things that are like citrusy or like like this, I get like taken back to like my family's vacations in South Carolina on Hilton Head Island. I don't know, it's tropical. It's tropical to me. It's not as tropical to some and it's certainly not super tropical, but like that's the most tropical that I have memories of from my youth. So that's what I associate it with. And I can like, I can have other things that I can be like, oh, this kind of reminds me of like, my vacations with my family and lo and behold it'll have like some sort of citrus in it like a lime juice or something or something that tastes like key lime pie or whatever it's pretty cool the brain is a crazy crazy wonderful thing so now that i have my three quarters or 20 milliliters of lime juice i'm going to more carefully pour this into my glass than i did the rum because otherwise i'd have to take up another lime and brutally murder it it's family Corn Bowie says, yeah, you should squeeze it a bit to, before to extract them. Yeah, like, um, oh my goodness, wait, I'm grabbing another lime. Supposedly, the trick is, you take, like, something like this, your lime, you do, like, a little, like, you can do this. It kind of, the inside of a lime has a bunch of different, like, cells and whatnot in it. Like, actual, I don't mean, like, cells as in, like, cells on a microscopic level, which, I mean, there are in there, too. But, like, there are little, like, cells of juice that, if you squeeze you'll like make the walls weaker or pop a couple of them so that they're pre-popped so that when you squeeze into it later with your with your apparatus, whatever you're choosing, that uh, you'll get more juice out of it. That's your lime tip for the day. Thanks, chat. Thanks, crowd. We're all learning from each other. And I like that. I like to learn new things. There was like a video that went viral recently, I think. It was a, some guy talking about like how to make like grapefruit super juice. And I think it was cocktail, right? I don't know if it actually went viral or like I thought it went viral because I'm in those cocktail mixology spheres, but I didn't actually watch it. I'm sure I probably could have learned something from it. If anybody's got a TLDR, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably watch it, maybe, or I'll forget about it like I do most things. Ugh, whatever. Some people who have dissociative amnesia have used foods and smells to help bring people's memories back to them and draw those memories back. The brain is awesome. The world is a wonderful place. I love, honestly, if I had another life, if I were living another life and I wanted to be a doctor, if I chose to be a doctor, like doctor surgeon or whatever, I totally would have chosen neuroscience. That shit is so cool. Like, like the brain does things. It produces the idea of me. Like, oh my God, I'm like losing my mind. It's crazy. The brain is a funny place. And with that, we will now make the brain do things that it otherwise would not do unless uh, stimulated by some sort of external chemical. In this case, ethanol. Ethanol? I'm pretty sure it's ethanol. I think that's the alcohol we drink. Certainly not isopropyl. That'd be, that'd be bad. The next ingredient we need in our concoction is one half an ounce of simple syrup. Now, this book incorrectly types that that's five milliliters. That's wrong. I know. I wrote in my book to correct it. It's 15 milliliters. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, kind of uh, around the world Navy cocktails. I fixed it. You will hear from me soon. Or you won't. Because I'm sure you don't care. Unless you do. In which case, I love it. Simple syrup, ladies, gentlemen, and those in between. I need a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of that. Uh, I really, really should be making fresh simple syrup every once in a while. I'm not. It's naughty. I know. I shouldn't be doing that. However, I'm a busy man. 
very difficult. I, you know, I say it's very difficult to do things like that. It shouldn't be. That's just me making excuses. It just, it's an excuse. That, that's all it is. I have absolutely no excuse for stuff like that. And so I should not be making such an example. Don't, do, do as I, do as I say, not as I do, which is a very hypocritical way of going about life. If I have children one day, which I'm sure I will, I hopefully will not teach them that way. Because that feels wrong. Although, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has mistakes. So we're pretty much, I want to say we're pretty much done with this, but we're actually kind of halfway there because there's an entire, you see how much is left in this glass? What are we going to do with that? Are we going to pour stuff into it? Do we have more liquid ingredients? We really don't. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up with crushed ice all the way to the top, basically. And then I think that's probably gonna bring the level all the way up here because ice is, can be kind of heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom back out because it's not really a show. It, honestly, there's not much entertainment in crushing ice unless you can absolutely see the dude crushing the ice um, on full screen with whatever apparatus he uses to crush ice with. Uh, Oh my goggles. Have I found my goggles? I did not find my goggles. Honestly, I don't... Let me check down here for a moment. Let me see if I have my goggles down here. Goggles! Goggles! Where are you? I'm gonna make a small mess. Hello? Googles? Googles? Where are my Googles? I cannot find my Googles. Where are my Googles? Googles! All right, I have no idea where those are. Um, so instead what I'm going to do is I have this plastic top hat in the corner that I think is for Happy New Year and I'm gonna protect myself like this so that my eyes are not in range of ice shards coming into them. Happy New Year, everybody. Ice crushing is great. Ice crushing is great. Ice crushing is wonderful. You should crush mice more often. Crush ice more often. That's what I said. In any case, the way that I crush ice, yeah, I always do is I will take, I, I could have something like a Lewis bag. I do not have a Lewis bag. I just haven't bought a Lewis bag. I have cheesecloth. And the cheesecloth here does a pretty good job of containing the ice as I smash it. I will put the ice inside. I will tie up the bag and I will whack it vig vigorously. Now just place a towel over them instead. That's it. You could totally do that. This is your all valid ways. I don't think there is a wrong way to crush ice unless you're hurting yourself, in which case, I have a pretty good argument that it's not the right way to do so because there are other ways that don't hurt. I think that two of my large things of, my, two of my large cubes will probably be enough. If not, I guess you'll have to stick around a little while longer for the special surprise at the end. It's going to be awesome. Well, as awesome as I can muster on the show. Anyway, fold up my cheesecloth. Have it holdable, it's holdable. Then my cube's in there. I'm gonna whack it with something hard. You know what that means. It's the wrench again. Oh, but there's a wrong way. There is a wrong way to cut the ice. There is definitely a wrong way to cut the ice. Don't cut it with your teeth. I mean, it's not gonna be very good. And the trusty wrench, the trusty, the trusty Craftsman 15 by 16 inches, I guess. Forge in USA VV 44704. I found this on the streets of Philadelphia. It has been thoroughly cleaned. I promise, it was cleaned months ago. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crush this ice and attempt to protect myself as best as possible. So, remember, please use protection. I really need to find my goggles. I should get like pink go pink goggles or something like that. Now, here we go, crush your ice. Where's my ice? There's my ice. Don't hit my hand, actually. Maybe this is a bad idea. Hmm, it could hit my hand. We're good, we're good. I can see perfectly, it's great. All right, here we go. Well, okay, that's pretty kind of noisy. In any case. Just gonna flip it a little bit. Try to get more crushness in there. I'm probably doing more damage to my table than anything else. Oh, I, I forgot to mention incoming loud noises. This can get a little loud. I apologize. I don't have a proper uh, sound space for this. See, the thing I like about my cheesecloth is the fact that when I crush ice in it, it doesn't go all over the place. A plastic bag will rupture. My cheesecloth? No way, Jose. This thing works great. The poor neighbors. I feel that way all the time. Literally all the time. Who is? Everybody. My mother is calling, and I'm going to remind her for probably the third or fourth time that I stream on Wednesdays. It'll, it'll be great. It'll be great. Hey, Mom. How you doing? 
I'm wonderful. I'm stringing some cocktails right now. I just crushed some ice with a wrench. It is Wednesday. Cocktails on a Wednesday. Mama's on the phone now. You know what we do for moms? I don't know how you do that. This is what we do for mothers and fathers or those in between. Parents, we celebrate you. We always do. That's okay. I hope you're doing well, but I'll try to call you back later. Yeah, or text me. Feel free to text me. Yes, yes. I believe it's got to do with the graduation, yes. All right, Easter, Easter. Gotcha, gotcha. We will have plans for that. Wonderful, wonderful. I love that. I love it. Sounds good. We'll figure it out. I will call you after. I love you too, Mom. So long! Bye! Ugh. Oh, I love my mother very much. Something about a stop sign. Oh, Astro once found a pipe wrench in the middle of the road of Arizona and a stop sign. Nice. And the poor neighbors. Indeed. Hey, Mom. How's it going? Oh, I didn't ask her. She should be doing well. It seems like she's driving, which is, which is good. Anyway, I filled this up with crushed ice. Uh, now I gotta go back to the full screen. I gotta bring my blocks back. Uh, and there's a bunch of ice on the table, but that'll melt. That'll melt and things will be fine. Everything is gonna be just fine. That's what my mama say. Just fine. That's what my parents say. Just fine. It's great. The final thing that we need to do for this cocktail, aside from put a straw in it and garnish it, is we need to add some Angostura bitters to the top. This is an Angostura bitters cocktail that is supposed to show off the Angostura bitters, and one of the best ways to do that is to put it right smack on top. They have a very interesting aroma to them. They've got a distinctly red color that will pretty much stain anything, anything, and probably including my table. I should test that, but not today. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna add some on top and then top it off with a little bit more crushed ice to really bring this thing all the way full. Um, uh, actually, actually, wait a minute. I think I have to stir first, right? Uh, crushed ice and swizzle the wooden spin and then top with more crushed ice, crown with dashes of Angostura bitters. Alas, hold on one second. I need to, I need to swizzle it up first. They say swizzle. I don't actually have a swizzle stick. I have a bar spoon instead. A swizzle stick is like, it's a wooden stick with like some notches on it, with some smaller sticks on the end of it. And it does a pretty good job of like really getting in there and like, instead of a bar spoon where you kind of go around the sides like this, you take the swizzle spoon and you do this. And it does a really good effect to all, it kind of extraly muddles all those mint leaves on the bottom. But all I got is a bar spoon. So that's where we go. Well, Angostura bitters, stay in your soul. There is only one way to find out. So I think what you should do is as you sleep and astral project yourself, astral project, astral project, I don't know, find yourself some bitters in the astral plane. Just pour them all over yourself. And if you wake up, I don't know. What does it mean to have a stain on your soul? Will you feel better? Will you feel worse? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. And you're like a lucky contestant. Or maybe it's me. I don't know. Let's top this off with some Angostura bitters on top. I'm just gonna like very lightly go around the top. And that's gonna have the interesting effect of kind of like snaking its way downward. It is kind of pouring its way downward. How does that look? I'm gonna apply some light to it because the lighting's still off. How does that look? All right, I kind of like that. Nice. I enjoy that very much. I enjoy that very much. It's kind of cool looking. Ooh, Astro's going to Mexico tomorrow, so you'll be able to, I'll look to make it at the airport. Nice! To make the make the Astro projection, that is. Maybe you'll Astro project yourself into Mexico, where you will find Angostura bitters, potentially. I wonder if they get imports from Trinidad and Tobago. Maybe. Not so sure. The last couple things I'm going to do for this cocktail here is I'm going to add a straw. They say to use a straw. I'm going to add a little bit more of my crushed ice if I have some left, which I do. There's some straggling pieces in here somewhere. I just need to find them. Here we go. Here we go. Kind of shake things around to get the last of it up there. Oh, there goes a lot of my ice onto the floor. Well, you know what? That's okay. Ice is just water. Ice, ice, baby. Ice, 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 ice. All right. Here we go. Pop that off. Oof. It's a beautiful yellow color. I agree. I like the color. Yellow is a nice color. Ooh! I got Angostura bitters on my table! Nice, we'll see how that stains. It's no longer gay, oh, it's kind of brown looking. Ooh, it kind of looks, ooh, from the back. It really seeped down the back a little bit. Like rust. It does have a rusty color to it. It's a lot more... It's like lighter on top because of all the ice, and it's darker on the bottom because of the, uh, the simple syrup in there and the lime juice. I can see some particulates and stuff. Oh, and the mint leaves, of course. 
So now that I've put my straw on top, the next thing we need to do is just add the final garnish. And the final garnish, at least as it pertains to this drink in general, is to take, some, take a bit sprig and put it on top and give it a slap. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring Menthol Man back for a moment. Hey, Menthol Man, what's going on? I don't wanna take your finest mint sprig. Uh, please don't fall, please do not fall. Thank you, this ruler is off balance. No, please don't fall, please don't fall. If you can just not fall for a moment, I'd appreciate that. I'm gonna grab my knife. Don't move. All right, I'm gonna find a nice mint sprig. Where's the best mint sprig I can find? Wow, it is an absolute mess over here. I cannot wait to clean this up later. Hi, everybody, I'm on this side. Uh, this is the side where I got the nice mint sprigs. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna cut it. There we go, it's been cut. And you know what? Nah, it's perfect. Let's go with a tiny one too. Yeah. All right, nice. Now I'm going to very carefully pull this off without knocking it all over. Excellent. These are the sprigs I got. I'm gonna put Menthol Man, Menthol Man, back to the ground. Thank you for your service, Menthol Man. I will put you back on your window pedestal later. Agreed. Right, proceeds to move. Menthol Man can't keep herself straight. This would make a beautiful, for a beautiful picture. Luckily, everything gets saved later. I love this. So anyway, now what it says to do is you just take your mint sprigs and give them a slap. Give them a light slap. I'm gonna take my mint sprig, as spriggy as I could make this thing, Give it a little slap. Uh, I dropped one of them. No, I dropped the lead. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Slappage in three and two and... Wow, there goes one of the leaves. It says a light slap. So that's as light a slap that I'm going to give it. And now that we've lightly slapped it, let's put it in. Let's just put it in there, you know? Put it in. Here we go. This is now presenting the Queen's Park Swizzle. Oh, no. The Queen's Park Swizzle indeed. Oh no, says Anna. Is beautiful to beautiful clip, beautiful clap, basically clap. Clap that mint. Clap the cheeks of your mint plant. It's great. Kinky. Kinky. Kinky indeed. This was the Queen's Park Swizzle. The Queen's Park Swizzle is made with eight mint leaves muddled on the bottom. Two fluid ounces or 60 milliliters of a flavorful dark rum. I used Myers rum. Three quarters of an ounce or 20 milliliters of lime juice. Actually squeezed as you can get it. F uh, 12, whoa, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. I've got a one-to-one -one ratio. You can do whatever you want to, honestly. Six to eight dashes of Angostura bitters for the top. Fill it up with crushed ice. Put it all the way to the top. Slap some mint sprig. Put it on as a garnish. And it says to drink from a straw. So, and the bartender's tip. Uh, just, uh, they got bartender's tips in this book is that take care when dashing large quantities of Angostura bitters They will permanently stain almost anything they come into contact with. Yes, I'm inclined to agree. Thank you Chad Park Hill and Alice O'Hare. Very lovely book you have here. Now Let's try this thing out. I want to see how this thing tastes honestly I think I don't know. It's got it's got rum and Angostura in it as well as the lime juice and simple So I think it's gonna be like a sweet rummy Cinnamony combination, although I'm drinking from the straw, so I'm gonna get from the bottom. I'm not gonna get much of that Angostura unless I like kind of do this thing up a little bit. Let's try that. That's rummy. Oh, that's rummy. Yeah, okay. So I'm getting first thing, I get the taste of rum. And when I say the taste of rum, like it's kind of I know what this rum tastes like. It's funky, you know? It's a, it's a funky little flavor there. It goes really, really well with the lime juice. I would say it almost takes the lime juice that I have and almost tastes key limey. I, I'm not squeezing key limes, although it kind of tastes like key limes. The second thing I get is the sourness. And I actually feel the sourness in the back of my mouth, like down here in my throat. That might be because I suffer from a case of acid reflux. I've mentioned this before. It affects me in various ways, especially acid. And I feel it back here. Your taste experience could be completely different. That's the beauty of taste and smell and your senses and whatnot. It's completely subjective. What I experience could be completely different from what you experience. And if you like it, it's great. Ooh, scale of one to ten. Wanna make it again? I need to kick a I need to take another sip of it. I like it. I honestly think this is a really nice way to drink rum. It's like it's it's much sweeter than what I'm used to, but it's pleasant. And it's not I'm not getting much of the Angus store yet. If you smell it, oh my god. Oh my goodness, oh my god, if you smell this thing? Okay, okay. I think the best part of this drink so far is the way that it smells. Angostura bitters, which I find very cinnamony. It's 
pairs so well with the smell of mint. That is a combo that I never had before. Wow, that is really, really good. Good or bad smell? Very good smell. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I actually feel like mint has a certain smell to it. But what I'm smelling right now is if I walked into like like a floral display. Like I've been to I've been to the Philly Flower Show before, which happens here in Philadelphia once a year in the convention center. It's wonderful. And I feel like I just walked into like a floral display. As if I walked in and was like, I was like, yo, it smells like flowers, but like more than just flowers. It's very nice. Let's get Anna's opinion. Anna, would you like to smell or taste? It tastes like rum. Tastes like rum. I'm not gonna like it. She's not gonna like it. Would you smell it at least? Would you care to smell it? Oh, she's gonna try it. Here you go, give it a try. Ugh, oh, I have so much wetness here. I'll clean up while you do so. Oh, she doesn't like it. Anna's not a fan. She is not a fan of that at all. Smell it. How does it smell? It smells like rum. All right, it smells like rum. Oh, it tastes like someone soured rum, but All not right. in a good sour way. Okay, Anna. Like a burning sour way. Burning sour. Oh, Astro meant just to smell. <laughs> thank you for going, Anna. Thank you so much for going the extra mile. You truly are a gem. Yo, put it here, girl. Let's go on the screen. Yeah, baby. Fist bump with the fiance. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting that down now. She's gotta keep me in line. She always has to. But I love this. Queen's Park's <laughs> Queen's Park Swizzle is lovely. I like this. It is very, very good. I would honestly make this again. I think I should. Honestly, I have been trying to keep myself in the practice of putting down my recipes in a recipe book and adding my tasting notes to them. I haven't really done that recently. It takes a lot of time to do all this stuff. I know it's an excuse. I should be doing that. However, Luckily, I'd be I'm able to, like, if I really wanted to, I could just go back and watch these things and just, like, transcribe what I'm saying, because this is pretty much, like, the most, like, the best, like, ex description I'm gonna get of this. Um, or I just make it again. I tell myself that I like it, and I make it again. And I, I so far, haven't made it again anything that I've done on stream, but that's just because I have so many different things to choose from. It's really hard to, like, go back and pick a single one of them, unless I really, really liked it. And I know I really, really like things. But I don't remember all of them right now, because my memory's shot. Astro! has traumatized Anna from ever listening to you again. Oh, Anna, Anna bounces back quickly. Anna's I'm probably gonna end quickly. up drinking all of your drinks anyway. Anna's planning on drinking everything. She will consume every I will taste drug. everything, will taste and everything. when I dislike it, I give it to Cam. So says the lady of the Disney Queen, Disney Kwan herself. I could get a little ink stamp collection for, for to stamp which ones are good or bad. I could. Wait. I mean, honestly, I have a, oh, Anna says wait, she has stamps. I have a, I have an I app have that I use. Ink. We can't do it. She doesn't have ink. We cannot do it. I have a ton of stamps. You have, stamps. you have star stamps. You have smiley face stamps. You have an I love you stamp. We have an I am so sorry stamp. I don't think I have any negative ones. That's forgiven. This is forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I'm learning ASL. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's thank you. Sorry. Hold the fist and do a circle. S. S, S for sorry. Do an S against your chest. That means you're sorry. The circle of Fs is for family. Oh, other way. No, you did it. No, I did it right. I did it right. This is family. This is daddy. This is mommy. You don't have to tap it. I don't have to tap it. This is mommy. This is daddy. Female face. Female male face. Part of face. Male part of face. <laughs> this means wet. This is me. Here. I will leave you with this. Daddy. Mommy. Wet. Sleep. Make. Do of that what you will. Oh, and bed and room. Nope. Close the oh, door. close the door. Room. There we go. Very interesting. Bad Very room. interesting indeed. So now, I have made my cocktail. I have given you my thoughts on it. But alas, there is still a small blue flame laying down in the corner of my screen. And that means that we're still doing an event. The stream is still going. It has not stopped this yet. And what I wanted to do was, I feel like at one of these points, in t some of the, one of these points, I definitely want to do like an Aura Fury themed cocktail. The community's great. I like them very much. I've technically been in it for a while because I've been utilizing like the mod pack and whatnot and only just recently like became a part of the community and they got stuff for content creators. It's really cool. It's fun. I don't really say much, but you know, just because I don't say much in the communities that I've been doesn't mean that I'm like not very, very appreciative of it there. It's all good stuff. Nobody's a dick, which is a great thing. But I wanted to do something special. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this drink and transform it ever so slightly to make it Aura Fury themed in recognition of 
Aura Fury itself and the community that Econ Brony has, I, I, what I can imagine, has worked very, very hard to bring together and has done a really, really great job of, at least in my humble opinion. Let's get a little closer here. I'm gonna put the cocktail back up on top and I'm gonna do something. This is, let me walk you through my thought process. The logo is a flaming thing of blue fire. There is blue and there is fire. So, step one, make it blue. I have blue curacao. I'm gonna make it blue. I'm merely gonna take some blue curacao and I'm going to drizzle it on top to give this drink a blue tinge to it. Blue, blue, as much as I can up top. I add a little bit more to the top. That has a very, very interesting color grade to it. Oh my God, completely forgot to take a picture. My Instagram picture. Oh, I'm in trouble. Wait, I'm gonna take a picture of it now. Ah! Wow, that looks it's beautiful. Beautiful. Actually, let me let me mix it up a little bit. Let me take my straw and do a thing. Do a thing. Oh, that's very green. It's green indeed. But that's okay, because I mixed red and blue together and also yellow. It's it's mostly the yellow. It's actually interesting. It's a lot more blue up on top. Uh, it's a lot more blue on the bottom. It's kind of a greenish. And then like the yellow of the rum is still up on top. Of course it's gonna turn greenish. I'm okay with that. Now, after I take my obligatory Instagram picture, or you know what? Let's wait on that actually. Let's wait on that actually. I got a, I got a pop, proper moment for that. The next thing we're gonna do is, remember what I said, blue fire? The other no. part is fire. Oh, Anna doesn't remember? No. Anna doesn't remember You only said it like 20 times. I only said it like 20 times. I have high proof rum here, and I'm gonna set the drink on fire. Note, alcohol is flammable. I'm gonna remove the very obviously flammable objects inside of my drink so that I don't make a mess of my apartment. There is a fire extinguisher outside. And wouldn't that be interesting for a live show? I think it might. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a float of this on top very carefully. I don't want it to overflow because if alcohol is on fire and it flows, that's no good. It's no good. So a little bit on top, just a little bit. I do have a lot of ice on it, so it might not go up the way that I want it to. However, we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna give it a try. So now, what I'm gonna have Anna do, I have my propane torch. I have safety at the ready. Let's get it going. Oh, turn the other one off too. There you go. All right, it's dark, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's maybe fire. <laughs> All right, well, it's not setting on fire. I tried, I tried my best. There's a lot of ice on top. I didn't know if this was going to work. However, I wanted to try it anyway. Lights on, please. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Instead, another thing, I figured that that might not actually work, but I wanted to try it anyway. The other thing that I'm going to do is, instead of lighting the basil on fire, er, excuse me, the mint on fire, I'm going to torch it ever so slightly. I'm going to ignite it for a hot second and then blow it right out, which is going to cause a sort of smoky effect. You can do this with various different types of woods for your cocktails. You can actually take some wood and burn it and then cover it with a glass and then take it off. The fire will extinguish on its own because it's lacking of oxygen and it'll actually add like a smokiness to your drink. And I kind of want to see what that, what that does. So I'm just going to take another sprig of my mint ever like so, and I'm going to, as best as I possibly can, carefully, of course, I'm gonna torch my mint. I'm gonna torch it, and I'm gonna replace my garnish with something that's a little more burnt. Let's see, let's see. So let's torch. It kind of pops and sizzles a little bit. It's actually not too bad. It's actually not, it's not doing uh, as much as a smokiness that I, that I originally anticipated it to, mostly because it's, it's still alive. All right, it smells like burnt mint. I'm okay with that. That accomplished exactly what I wanted it to. Sort of, kind of. I mean, honestly, I am no professional at this. I am merely a novice, but I enjoy my time. And I'm gonna put my garnish back because I think it looks pretty good. In any case, A for effort, fun to do. And we've seen it done before. Astro is not totally new to the concept of setting things on fire. I'm also curious to see how this changes the taste of the drink. So I'm gonna kind of do my, do my stir again best as I can. Most of the heavy alcohol is on top, so it's probably not gonna do much, but I did add some curacao, which has a, an orangey-ish flavor to it. Nice, same, mostly same as before. However, that sourness that I tasted very prominently from the lime juice has kind of been doled back a bit by the sweetness of the, of the blue curacao. It's nice, I like that, I like that indeed. 
I think, I actually like, I think in my opinion, I liked it better the other way without the Kurosawa in it. But you know what? A for effort. I think it looks pretty damn good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my obligatory, obligatory Instagram picture. I have a cocktail Instagram now. It's probably not important to most people, but I wanted to share it nonetheless. So it's kind of cool. Let me, let me change the angle of this a little bit. I am not I redeeming like. the drink. And this is, she will not be redeeming the drink. The drinky drunk. I applaud her. Those anyway. Extras in there. Ugh. There we go. First time, the River Leon. I bow to you, the River Leon. I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, the, liver, the River Leon fe felt like a regal name to me. And for that, I just, I just wanted to do so. Welcome. How are you? Can you rate my emotes, please? Thanks for the bow. You're very welcome. Feel free to ch share your emotes and whatnot. I like seeing new things. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I'm gonna take my yoga blocks off my table. I don't need that anymore. Put that back down there. I'm gonna zoom the way back out. What do we got here? I see. I don't know what that is. I cannot tell, tell what it is. I am gonna give it a rating of five because I like the colors. However, I don't exactly know what it is portraying. And I feel, in my humble opinion, and it is merely my opinion, that it should be obvious of what the emote is meant to portray. For example, these Pepe hands. Not as obvious. Low rating. Because like, seven, seven is cool. It's got some background to it, but like, I don't necessarily know that crying, that the, this crying means like, like, I feel bad for you, you know? Ah, thank you. You're so very welcome. We like to enhance the community around here via crowdsourced efforts. Technically, that's what Google does. Google's like, <laughs> Google's like, hello, person on the internet. Is this a plane? And you'll be like, no, Google, that is not a plane. And it's like, thank you very much. This is not a plane. And I'll be like, Hello, user on the internet. Is this a plane? And they'd be like, no, Google, that is not a plane. They'd be like, okay, thank you, user. Not a plane. User, is this deodorant? Why, yes, Google, it is deodorant. Thank you, user. I will, I will improve that for next time. Here's another one. It is big red lips looking upwards at... It's a crying It's Shrek. Shrek. It's a crying Shrek. Anna says it's a crying Shrek. It is crying. Give it a solid seven. I like that. We appreciate Shrek around here. It's more obvious than it was before. I think, I think it could use some more shading, but that's just my own personal touch. If not, if not for that particular opinion, I would give it an eight because I think it is very clear what it's trying to portray. I like that. I like that indeed. In any case, oh, this is my flaming thing. I like my flaming thing. I put my flaming thing away because it is dangerous. In any case, I thought it was a green M&M. Honestly, it does give me green M&M &M &M vibes. You're okay. You're okay. I like that. This looks like lemon face from a distance. Now, I, context. I have a small view of chat over there, and I have a closer view of chat over here, and I think it looks kinda, it's giving me JoJo vibes. Like JoJo Bizarre Adventure. Lemonhead Dracula. I'm into that. Or kinda like from Rick and Morty, the show me what you got, guys. I'm getting that vibe as well. But I do see Lemonhead. Let's do, let's do six. I like that, I like that. First time chat, am I old enough to be drinking these? Yes, I am the age of 24. I was born in the beautiful year of 1997. I don't know what happened in the year 1997 aside from my birth. And yes, I'm definitely old enough. Although I have a very baby face. Why are you pointing at me? My fiance is pointing at me. I was gonna me. say the year of, but I don't remember what your year is. I'm the year of the ox. No, that's Andrew's year. Oh shit, I'm not the year oh, no, of the no, ox. No, 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 he's the pig. Maybe you are the ox. I'm pretty sure I'm the year of the ox. I'm the tiger. Oh, I don't remember. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Oh, you were blessed really with amazing jeans. I certainly hope so. I actually don't wear many jeans. I like to wear corduroys if given the opportunity, but I do work with ox. electronics. You're the ox. I told you. I do wear corduroys and I work with electronics. Therefore, it makes a lot of static electricity and I don't want to break what I'm paid to work with. So I don't wear my corduroys very often. What am I wearing today? I got khakis and black socks. Not very interesting today, I know. I tried to do something different. I have a pineapple on my shirt. I like that. You know, that's the symbol of hospitality. The pineapple is the symbol of hospitality. Everybody get a load of this. You are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Please observe the pineapple. Indeed. You are welcome. I just noticed I just gave you all a close up of my <laughs> nipple. That was not, <laughs> that's not what I was intending on doing. Is it a mojito? Well, now that we got some people asking, let me go over what I had, what I had created. It's not a mojito. Uh, it doesn't have, it's not, mint isn't like mint syrup or anything like that. It's not super duper minty. What I created tonight was the Queen's Park Swizzle, which uses Angostura bitters, simple syrup, rum, a dark flavorful one, uh, as well as, uh, I already mentioned the simple syrup, 
Ooh, rum, simple syrup, lime juice, and Angostura bitters. Indeed, two ounces, two ounces or 60 milliliters of the rum, uh, three quarters of an ounce or about 20 milliliters of the lime juice, 15 milliliters or half an ounce of the simple syrup, and then top the top off with Angostura bitters. Fill it up with crushed ice, put some mint in it, put a straw in it, swizzle it around, bam. And I tried to set it on fire, but it didn't actually work. Astro says that he's a rabbit. I believe him. Those other emotes look like question marks. I, I, I like that one the best. I think that was the best one so far. I'm going to give that eight and a, eight and a, you know what? My scales are all biased anyway. I'm going to give it a nine. I think it's very obvious what that is trying to portray. It's just like, it's giving that face of like, what? What are you doing? That's not a mojito? What the hell are you talking about? I like that one. I like that. We should make this a hot sub stream with cocktails. It looks amazing. Dude, I- I have a solution. Okay, Anna's about to pull out the inflatable <laughs> bathtub that we have in our bathroom that I paid $80 for. I'm not you gonna paid introduce 55. that. I paid $80 for it. What are you talking like about? I don't know what you're talking about. I definitely didn't. Anyway, it would take a long, long time to fill up. So unfortunately, uh, we have to plan gonna in build advance. It over here. Uh, she's gonna build it and put it over my head. We don't have enough time for that. We don't have enough time for that. This was cocktail time, everybody. I thank you all so much for sticking, for hanging out, sticking around, just doing what you do. Sharing Honestly, emotes. what's that? Sharing emotes. Sharing emotes. We appreciate that as well. Anna personally loved them. She's been giving comments from the side. I have a very small apartment. That's my fiance over there. She's the Disney queen, self-proclaimed. Disney has not bestowed upon her the title of queen. That's she calls herself name. that, and we don't argue. No, we do not. That was cocktail time, everybody. The X bar. Or just the bar. The X is silent. Thank you all for coming. It has been very, very fun so far. I'm going to continue this journey on the other side of my desk, playing some Graveyard Keeper. It's a video game. I dig up bodies. I murdered somebody some one time. It was pretty awesome. And dead people keep on coming up. It's great. And it never stops. And it's wonderful. I do these cocktail streams every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you liked it, come on back. If you didn't, that's okay. Peace out. Have a wonderful rest of your life. There's no pressure. It was a wonderful time, and I enjoyed every single second of it. So to everybody, if you're watching and following along at home, have a wonderful evening, or have a wonderful morning. I don't know what time zone you're in. I'm on the eastern coast, but you may not be. In which case, have a good evening, or twilight, or dawn, or whatever. It's the favorite part of the week. It's Astro's favorite time of the week, and it could be your favorite time of the week. It is one of my favorite times of the week. At the very least, I can say this is the most consistent thing that I think I've ever done throughout my entire life. In terms of school, school has only ever gone up to nine months at a time quarters in college only went to three months at a time i've been doing this thing like a year now over the year oh my god it's been so it's been like a year it's been even more than a year i love y'all that that that's all i got for now i'll see you all on the other side if you choose to stick around with me i will continue to drink this cocktail and see how it evolves over time because oftentimes the cocktails do evolve as the ice melts it warms up a little bit and things change just like our bodies our bodies change and so do your cocktails or just your tails, or just your cocks, whatever you choose. In any case, peace out. See you all on the other side. Bye, y'all. And it's giving me a really weird look. Don't judge me. Peace. Oh, blue points. Give me those blue points. Is it enough? Am I a cultist now? Oh my god. I will now be a cultist. Wait, wait, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah! I'm a cultist now. Hell yeah, I am officially a cultist now. This is great. This is beautiful.